Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today I'm going to tell you how I afford to live in Los Angeles as a writer slash all the other shit that I've done or do. Okay? Yeah, that's about how this is going to break down. And make sure you have a pen and paper or you are taking notes because it's not as easy as it seems and most of you are going no none of this seems easy you dumb fuck <laughs> that's why we asked you to make a video about it actually a lot of people have asked me over the last few months to kind of break this down because there is kind of a lot because i'm assuming when you say to someone that you're a writer like most people i guess imagine that being a writer means you just write shit and then people buy shit. And that's not at all how any of this goes. So honestly, everything I'm gonna tell you right now is going to tell you, I guess, how to do what I do wherever you are. You don't have to be in LA to do this. Um, it's actually probably harder to do here than it is in most other places in the country or Fuck the world for that matter. And I'm not saying it like that to like pat myself on the back because life's fucking hard. Like I do not have an easy life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking God. But it is easier since I'm not buying two packs of cigarettes every couple days. So I should have written all this stuff down so we could kind of go over it. Should I write it down right now? Let me, yeah, let me. This means I'm gonna have to edit the fuck out of this video. Okay, I made a list. Bing. Now I have something to kind of go off of here and I'll put it there so it doesn't look like I'm reading anything. I'll be like Trump with a teleprompter, okay? First off, writing books. I have written, and it's more now, but if you do the math here, I can't remember how many, but I've written over, I mean, I'm probably close to 100 books because I, I have over 50 chat books. There were over 32 books as I released them in the Black Star Canyon series, plus all the other series I did plus the books I wrote for small presses back in the day. Um, and, the, and the reason why I'm putting all these numbers in here is because this is important as this goes on. Yeah, I've probably written close to 100 books under various pen names over the last 20 years, okay? So that's the thing. These books, some of them are sold in ebooks, some of them are print books, some of them are PDFs, some of them are uh, handmade chapbooks, some of them are audiobooks. Oh, with that said, let me do this real quick. And just so you guys know, extra, extra, um, the remaining copies of this that I have, I'm pretty sure they're only a dollar on my Etsy shop. Go to the Etsy shop, because I've been doing a really bad job pimping my shit lately. So go to my Etsy shop, pick up a copy of Extra Extra, and there's a bunch of other books that are still around. I have a lot that are almost out. I'm trying to sell as many as possible before the big move, okay? So if you want to grab a copy of Extra Extra, get it while the getting's good. It's only a fucking dollar. Don't be such a bitch. Just do it. Over the years... I have done a lot of zines. A lot of them I just made and then went to like uh, table at conventions or festivals and they're out of print now. But that's another thing, tabling. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Shit, let me write that down. Fuck. Right off the bat, the thing that you're gonna realize with me is that quantity matters if you're trying to live, okay? so. Understand that right off the bat. Quantity matters, okay? If you're good at doing the quantity, even if you're not good when you start, the quality will follow, okay? Because once you're doing something over and over and over again, you get better at it. Isn't that how things go? 
Practice makes perfect. The problem I see most people have is that they can't swallow their pride enough to just get stuff out. There are so many people out there with zero books out or one book out that they're thinking about taking down, but they also have drawers full of notebooks full of ideas and half-written fucking shit. If you want to have any kind of success at this and play the odds, odds are more in your favor to make a living as a writer or artist if you are constantly putting stuff out. If you're one of those people who are like really banking on the fact, ooh, I'm gonna get an agent and like then in maybe three years, this one book I'll make might get picked up and after a couple years of like doing that, then the book will really come out and then that book will be a hit. Well, guess what? Now you have like six years to jerk off for a little bit. What are you gonna do? Or just bury your inner critic, swallow your fucking pride, let everyone see your nuts and fucking just put your shit out. Like what the fuck? Like the only person that you are fucking is you, that's it. Like. Nobody cares about your feelings. If you want to be a writer, fucking write stuff. But if you want to make a living as a writer, that means you have to be a fucking publisher. So publish yo shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand that? The other thing here is, if I could give you any advice while, cause like we have, we barely scratched the surface of this list. Start now, today. I challenge any of you fuckers out there that have a finished manuscript on your fucking hard drive. Put it out today. Just pause this video, put it out, come back. Go to Amazon, it takes you five fucking minutes. Just put it out. Once you pop that cork, it gets really easier to put stuff out. Don't read reviews, just put the fucking thing out and start working on the fucking next thing. That's it. Okay, so back to me. Me. Okay. The other thing I do with my writing is website stuff. So some of you know, actually probably a lot of you don't, I own quite a few websites. Most of those websites I haven't updated in fucking years, but they still get hits because the SEO on the sites are still searchable. And when people are looking up certain things, these sites pop up. Now, writing content for a website or a blog is a lot different than writing like poetry or writing fiction. It has to be, but actually, if you follow how I write poetry, blog writing is actually quite similar. It has to be very open. There has to be like a lot of air going through it, but you also have to make promises and then follow through with those promises, okay? A lot of the things I'm gonna be talking about here are intertwined, okay? so. I have these websites. In these websites, there's usually mailing list things. Like sign up for this mailing list and we'll send you a free bookmark or a free, I don't know, checklist of how to not be a fucking douchebag, you piece of shit. Something like that, okay? And then I have those emails and then what I'm supposed to be doing is sending out newsletters periodically. And I should probably do a whole video on email marketing, especially since I'm trying to resurrect a bunch of dead lists and we'll see how that goes. Cause I don't know if that's gonna go very well. Blah, 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 okay? Now with the website, with the email marketing, there's also something called affiliate links. Now, again, all of these things that we're writing, we write books, we write fiction, we write poetry, we also write blog posts, we also write newsletters and emails. This is all writing. This is all shit you have to get good at because no one is going to do it for you. The days of agents and managers and publishers doing this shit for you is gone. Publishers would rather not have to do this shit. So the people they're giving book deals to are people who are already good at blog posts, who are already good at newsletters, who are already good at marketing, who are already good on social media. So they don't have to fucking do it. Nobody gives a shit 
about quality anymore. Nobody fucking cares. If they did, you wouldn't be bitching about all the books that are coming out that you think suck. It doesn't matter. Taste is judged by how many things are sold. And if somebody who has no talent writes a book that sells a million copies because they have a huge fan base, that is what is important. Now, if you want to die on the hill, but you know, art, you know, then just do what you do well. Just be good at it. Because not everyone likes everything. Ah, I hate talking about this all the time. Okay, so anyway, so affiliate marketing is you could set stuff up through like Amazon, other companies like Scribner. I used to do affiliate marketing through Scribner and just other companies, especially if it's something that makes sense to your brand and what you do. And then you have links for these things in your on your website in your newsletters fuck your youtube video descriptions your uh like bitly when you have your instagram or your link tree you know like have affiliate links in there hey if you want to like if, if you want to support this channel i should probably put my amazon affiliate link back in the bottom of this video i did this experiment for a little bit where i tried to take out all links in my description to see if there was a drastic difference in shit when I put, cause like I used to have descriptions in my videos that had like 20 fucking links in them. And I think that for a lot of people, when they see all that, they fucking tune out. So I think right now, um, like lately, like the last month, the only link I have in my video descriptions is just for my website. I'm just doing an experiment right now to see what works and what doesn't. So. With that said, I'll put an Amazon link in here. And if you want to support me in this channel, it would be really helpful that if you think you're going to be buying something big on Amazon in the next couple days, can you just fucking click my link to go to Amazon? And then that way it puts cookies on your computer. So you have to accept the fucking cookies or else you're fucking me here. Accept the cookies and then make an order and then I get a small percentage of what you did. Now, the thing that's awesome about affiliate links is that... Yes, somebody might click my affiliate link and buy a $3 ebook. Awesome, I appreciate that. Every cent counts. But some people click my affiliate link, go to look at an ebook, and then get an ad for a refrigerator, and then buy a refrigerator. I get a bigger percentage of the refrigerator than I do of the ebook. It's the same percentage, but I get more money because you spent more money. So when, I don't know, this is probably a good way to share this because there's a couple different things that happen where sometimes I'll do vlogs and I do a lot more shit outside and like I'll go to different places and I'll get different food and I'll go farther away and I'll do all this shit. The only time I do that is when... Like I do really good in affiliate links that month because I made enough money to be able to go fucking live like a lunatic for a little bit. And then there's other times when the affiliate stuff doesn't do that well. But here's the thing. Everything I'm laying out for you, none of this is concrete. None of this is stable. The only way I live is I do all of these different things and shit trickles in. And that's just how the fuck it is. And I've been doing this for so long, which we'll get to in a minute, that I'm kind of used to living meagerly. And then when things go good, I'm like, oh, fuck, I could breathe a little bit. That's fucking nice. But like, if you live above your means, being an artist or a writer is probably not the best thing for you. It's probably going to be really fucking scary. But if you can live humbly and then like do fun shit every once in a while when the money comes in, then you'll be fine. Okay, so moving right along with this shit. Also AdSense. So I have AdSense on a lot of my websites. There's one website I have that for whatever fucking reason, and I haven't been able to figure it out, AdSense will not approve putting ads on that site. And it drives me absolutely fucking crazy. And every probably three or four weeks, I'll get a bee in my bonnet. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking do this. I'm going to make this work. And then I fucking do a bunch of shit and nothing fucking happens. So whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, one of my sites, AdSense will not work on. And it makes me want to fucking scream. AdSense works a lot 
in the same way as affiliate links do in the sense that when someone clicks on an ad you get a like a cut like a cost per click thing but then um, depending on what the ad is and what your like deal is like sometimes you get more but then like also google has determined that the content you're talking about um whether it's, it's usually more non-fiction shit the content you're talking about is what's the word i'm looking for here like higher quality higher value like people with more money like more disposable income will be looking at this shit compared to something over here. So for instance, like if you're writing about travel, okay, you're gonna make more per click than if you're writing about, I don't know, like what's the best ballpoint pen to use when playing a crossword puzzle? Like some, some fucking shit like that. Like, like you might get like a cent for the crossword puzzle thing, whereas you might get like, I don't know, like 14 bucks for the travel thing, okay? So there's like different levels of advertising based on what the advertiser thinks your target audience can offer them, if that makes any fucking sense at all. So diversify is what I'm trying to say. Come up with different things to write about and do those things. Also with AdSense is YouTube, this right here, okay? I get little kickbacks for fucking ads on YouTube. I get kickbacks from the members that I have. You amazing people who I love so much and just want to hug and kiss. Thank you. You make all of this a lot easier. I appreciate you. Um, Patreon. I still have a Patreon. And um, the people who support me on Patreon, I really appreciate you guys because I don't really do a lot of stuff on Patreon because I don't really know what to do on Patreon. And it's kind of tricky for me going back and forth between YouTube and Patreon, especially if I'm putting up the same content and trying to like, uh, what do you call it? Like block certain things from everyone else on YouTube seeing it, but making it to where it's okay to do it on Patreon. So then I have to upload two things on YouTube. And I, I, I just, I don't like doing all that shit. So the people who support me on Patreon, like, you guys are fucking awesome because you're doing that because you fucking like, like just appreciate the shit that I do. And, um, I fucking love you guys for that. Okay. Music. I've been in bands for years. Like probably I've been doing band shit longer for income than anything. Like I started a record label when I was in high school and was like recording bands, putting out demo tapes, putting on shows at local venues, um, local coffee shops, local fucking yogurt shops, you know. A lot of times I would put bands together from people who I knew who didn't know how to play anything. I would teach them how to play each instrument because I used to have a drum set, a bass, and a guitar. So I would um, teach them all how to play, and then I would play one of the instruments in that band. And so I would put on shows where there were like five bands on the bill and I was in every band. Like I played bass in one band, guitar in another band, drums in another band, sang for another band, the whole fucking thing. Because I was trying to get enough shit happening to where people could come in and pay and the venue would be happy and ask me to come back and do it again. And then I'm building little fan bases for these bands and then like recording the albums and then selling the albums and all the shows and then putting zines together for all the bands on my label that is just like me doing a bunch of different projects. At, when I talk about it now, it seems kind of shifty, but when I was in high school, I'm like, yeah, this is great. And then in art class, uh, I convinced my art teacher to let me just use the silk screen shit. And so I made all of my band merch for all the bands on the record label in my art class. So I would go to T-shirt warehouse um, on Lincoln and get fucking five shirts for 10 bucks and then go take them to school and print like the band logos for whatever band I was doing or the record label shirts and do that and then take those to the shows that I put on to sell there. Like the whole thing was like a constant moving thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I always feel like people who came from especially the punk scene and just like the music scene in general have such a leg up on people who didn't come from that DIY you have to fucking do this or you'll drown attitude that like I keep trying to instill 
in people in the like self-published like poetry or writing community and it's just like that is just something that not everybody can do okay so with that said between creeperson the murder cult and my solo shit like i get typically and i've said this before i get typically enough money to pay a bill and lately i've been getting enough like the last like probably six months I've been getting enough money to pay a couple bills every month. Um, Most of the stuff is on, and again, this is because there is so much material. Like Creeperson has like, I think like six albums and then a couple like EPs and shit. My solo shit, there's probably, I don't know, like 10 albums or something. I don't know. Uh, Murder Cult has, I don't know, maybe, I think 16. I did a lot of shit with Murder Cult. Murder Cult is not available as many places as Creeperson and my solo shit, but my, Creeperson and my solo shit is available like on like over like 30 different platforms worldwide. And so like I get, I mean, I, it's not good money, but it's, uh, it's also shit that I don't have to do anything. Like, I'm not, like, really promoting my music. I'm not really, like, right now making new music, you know? It's just, it exists, and it's out there, and people can listen to it. And it's residual income. That's what I'm trying to get at. So all of these things are residual income. And as this goes, the more shit you have, the more shit that comes in. Because it's not like, you know, this book sold, I don't know, like... 50 copies last month so that means next month it's going to sell 100 no i just as long as it stays in between like 20 and 50 that's great because i also have 100 other books that if they sell in between 50 and 100 that would be great so the more shit you have and like you have like kind of an idea of how much your shit gets discovered organically you have a sort of baseline for kind of roundabout what usually comes in. And then when you actually try and try to like market shit and go hard on something, then that shit goes up and you're like, wow, look at that. And it's just like the more shit you have, the more money you will make. The longer you do it, the easier it gets. Like it's all about longevity. As long as you are still doing things, Things will still happen. The more shit you have, the more shit you get, okay? Oh, so my film stuff. Um, I only get, like, film shit, like, film royalty stuff, like, twice a year. This last year, the first check was a lot smaller than I, like, I was like, oh, man, it's finally happening. Nobody gives a shit anymore, and nothing's available anywhere. But then the next one I got was, like, up again. And I'm like, oh. Okay, tits. That's great. I'm happy with that. The one I got earlier this year, it was lower than the last one I got, but higher than the one that scared me. So that still exists. And that comes in like, again, like twice a year. It's not anything that I can like live off of. But getting those twice a year fucking checks is awesome. And and it always happens when I forget that like it's coming. And like, I'm like, oh man, and then boom. And then you're like, oh, but again, I have made over 50 films, feature films. 15 of them are out in some form or another in different parts of the world. For those of you who know about my film rights here, I'm actually, we've been talking about this. I'm trying to get the rights to my films back. So I can like just put them up on YouTube or go through a different distributor, like a digital distribution company and control how people see my shit. Because right now there are certain companies that own my stuff and it's not out. Like it's like in a vault, like it's not available anywhere. And to me, that's like money on the table. So if they're not going to do it, I want to do it. So that's kind of what my legal predicament has been the last year and a half, trying to make that happen. And it's been a fucking nightmare. Um, Hopefully next week I'm going to have not necessarily a decision on it, but I'm going to have a time frame of when the decision's going to come. So... 
fingers crossed for that shit, guys. Tabling at like fests and conventions, that's just a place for you to go. Even swap meets, you could do shit like that there. Um, it just is putting your shit in front of people. And you don't only have to do physical copies. I used to do like with um, my short films, with music, with um, even ebooks. I would get thumb drives that would have like my website on the thumb drive or like my logo on the thumb drive and have the thumb drive full of all of my music or all of my ebooks or like a couple short films and um, sell those, you know? So it doesn't have to be like, like you could still sell digital products in front of people. So, but like think outside of the box, think of how to do this, think of how to make this happen. Oh, and then I forgot about um, merchandise like t-shirts and shit. That's a thing, I get a little bit for that every month. Cause I don't just have my stuff. Like there was a period back in the red bubble days I started doing this like in 2006, I think on Cafe Press, if that was a thing, where I would just like come up with funny sayings. I did a bunch of like Atari memes and um, those got shut down after about a year. Atari claimed copyright infringement or some shit. Like just putting stuff up on sites like Redbubble or uh, Spreadshirt, I think is what it's called, or um, just things like that. Um, I think, I, cause like, uh, the ones that do good for me still are like HP Lovecraft stuff because that's all public domain. So like, I will, like, there's this one shirt I have that is the entire first chapter of Call of Cthulhu, like written really tiny and it like fits on the front of a shirt and like that sells pretty good, which is weird, but it does. Um, so just little things like that. And, um, again, thinking outside of the box, but if you're a writer and you come up with catchy little lines, like, um, hungry, like Dahmer, that one was huge. Like that one sold for years. And, um, I had it on like panties and baby bibs. It was really fucking weird. Whatever. Let me see what else. And then performing, which I haven't really done in a long time. And I was trying to put that tour together this year and it all went to shit. But um, between music performing, taking my films to like, um, like festivals or conventions or um, for like screenings and then um, just like talking, like doing not necessarily stand up, but like, hey, everybody, I'm talking to you now. Fucking listen to what I'm saying. Hey, I'm going to make you laugh. Give me your money. Shit like that. Um, that seems to be a fucking thing. Okay. Lastly, um, also artwork. As you can see, I have awful paintings around me. And you wouldn't believe this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. People buy my shitty paintings, which I love because that's awesome. And I used to do little things. And what site was that through? Was it Big Cartel? I don't know. I, I, I did it for a little bit and I didn't like how it was working out. And I was feeling like um, weird about it. But I was doing like digital prints of stuff. And I stopped doing it. I think it was just because it was a lot of work to do stuff. So now basically if people hit me up about one of my paintings, like I will either sell them the original or get a print made for them and send it to them. Obviously the originals cost more and things on paper or just on sheets cost less than actual canvases and shit, but you know, whatever. You could figure all that shit out. But then um, I was also doing book covers for, I was also doing book covers for um, authors for a while and kind of fell out of that. It, and it's so funny because like I get one person who's a fucking pain in the ass and makes my life a living hell over a book cover. And it makes me just not want to ever do it in, anymore ever again. Because I like the, to the like my tolerance for people's bullshit is so fucking small. So um, there's that. So if you take all of these things that I just talked to you about and add all that shit up, that is how I live in LA, okay? And eek by, okay? I am not rich. I am not like balling like a motherfucker, but I do okay. 
I'm not homeless. I'm not starving. If you want to move to LA, because that's what the person was asking. If you want to move to LA as a writer, either make sure you have a writing gig out here already or right now, because if you're not moving out here until next year, start putting shit out now. Residual income, residual income, residual income. The more shit you have out, the more stuff you have to make money on, the more chances you have to make money, okay? Like the more you put into the marketplace, the more ability you have to be able to not be homeless. That was probably the wrong way to say it, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. So being a writer doesn't just mean you're a writer. If you are a self-published writer, you are a writer, you are an editor, you are a publisher, you are a marketer, you are um, doing affiliate marketing, email marketing, you are writing blog posts, you are writing sales copy, which I don't even think we talked about, but sales copy for the things you are selling. Um, you are, if you're making handmade stuff on Etsy, you're doing that too. If you um, are the uh, graphic designer for your publishing company, meaning you're making all the artwork and all the book covers and doing that shit too, you're doing that. Are you a web designer now too? If you're not, get Squarespace or Wix. That shit looks pretty professional, I guess. You can do all of these things, but you just have to do those things. And a lot of people just don't wanna fucking do all that. And then if you're like me, and after like 25 fucking years of doing all of this shit, you can live. Not not that it takes you 25 years to do that because one of the questions that came up in the live stream about this was when did I know I was going to be able to like just make a living doing the shit? And I didn't. I had a job. I had a falling out with the boss. I got fired in 2007. And I said, fuck it. I'm just going to make movies. And making movies, like at least then was a lot easier than all this other shit I'm talking about, especially to live well. Like I made more money in film than I did in anything else that I've done. But film, again, is a higher ticket fucking item than fucking all this other shit. So, um, but at the end of the day, like I just said, fuck them, I'm not gonna suck their dick anymore. I'm gonna do my own thing. And I just did it. Okay, there is no, I was making X amount of dollars doing this, so I thought now is the right time to stop. I did not do that. And I'm not saying what I did is the way you should do it, but that's what happened. I said, fuck this, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And then I just did my own thing, that's it. But when you do that, like think about how much time you spend at work, okay? Now, you're gonna have to spend at least that much time working on your shit. And I don't mean the writing part. The writing part's fun, okay? We enjoy that. We enjoy creating art. We enjoy painting. We enjoy drawing. We enjoy coming up with these awesome ideas. But you actually have to set like work hours for all of the admin shit and all of this other crap that I've been talking about that nobody likes or wants to do. And then you have to look at at least that part as your job and figure out marketing, figure out advertising, figure out all of this shit and get your work in front of people and sell it, okay? I don't mean to crush anybody's dreams or anything here, but you have to do stuff to get stuff, okay? So like I said, start today. Put something out right fucking now. Do something. If you are serious about wanting to do this for a career, prove it by fucking putting something into the marketplace that somebody could give you money for. Do that, okay? And then the more you do that, the easier it gets, okay? So, type hard everybody, join the crew, pick up extra extra for a dollar on my Etsy shop. If the link's not below, it's etsy.com, I think slash Matt Wall writes or slash shop slash Matt Wall writes. I think a link to my website is down below. Um, but I am changing my website, so I don't know what, if you click on that, what it's going to look like by the time you watch this video. At least right now, in the month of June and the year of our Lord 2024, that shit's around, okay? If you have any more questions, you want me to get into any granular anything, leave them in the comments down below and I will do another video like this soon, okay? So I hope this was helpful. Good luck to all of you guys. You guys can do it. If I could do it, anybody could do it. I'm a fucking idiot, okay? So if I can make this work, 
You guys can make this work. Just don't be so fucking scared. Just jump. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you guys later.